So this is the story about how I ended up 50 metres deep under an oil rig at 3am with a giant stingray bar between my legs. So on this particular dive, I was in the northwest of Australia and my job was to land a 10 ton load next to a live gas pipeline. Sounds simple enough, but I had a lot of elements against me on this dive. Right, have you got a compass with you or you uh, got some way, you know which way you're going to go, eh, Johnny? You got... Roger that. I'll give you a bearing now before we even get in the water then. Let's have it. So the dive was 50 metres deep. It was 3 a.m. in the morning, pitch black. I could see about a metre in front of me. Keep a look out for that clump weight, eh? Roger. I had a torch on my helmet and my supervisor could see what I could see and he could also have live communication with me. Right, you're about seven metres off the bottom. Let's leave it there, drop down when you're ready. Roger. Even after years of diving, a dive like this particular one gets your heart beating. Your adrenaline's high, it's, you've got, you know how far from help you are down there, you know? As soon as I hit the sea floor, I felt that familiar buzz of nitrogen narcosis. But this particular dive, to be honest, I was off my face. Ah, oh, 160, thank you. You got your bearing? Roger. So nitrogen narcosis, it's a, uh, it's a phenomenon that affects divers. Um, I'm no doctor, but I do know that it happens generally around 30 metres. And there's a few predisposing factors that can make you more susceptible to nitrogen narcosis. Right, how far do you think you've gone? Some of those factors include uh, the temperature of the water, obviously how deep you go, um, your, your state of fatigue, whether you're really well rested or not, hydration, um, how hard you're working. Sometimes it can get really extreme and, and hardcore and you can get what they sort of refer to as face slamming narcosis where it comes on really quickly and you feel this immense disorientation. Some states, you turn your hat light off, you need to have a look up and see if you see anything yet, eh? Yeah, can you turn it on please? There you go. Yeah, got it. Alright. Well just come down so that tagline's by you, eh? Roger. So I've made my way over to the job and this giant bait ball has just started engulfing me. I can't see a thing. I'm off my head and the fish have started like actually swimming into my face plate so hard. Like they're, they're bouncing off my face plate. I can't see. They've started going inside my wetsuit. So my whole body, I can feel them squirming all over my body. It's just, I'm in such a surreal environment. I've got a video on that. Right, we're going to bring it down so that shackles on the bottom, then we'll check our orientation, yep. So because of this bait ball, I can't see a thing. I'm trying to land this load next to the gas pipeline. Coming down. You need to keep an eye on it, Johnny, because you need to give us an all-stop once that shackles on the bottom. Gotcha. Can you still see the anode? <laughs> Not really. Uh, it's just bites in the way. If I land the load on the gas pipeline, I know the, the consequences are going to be major. You know, it's going to be a huge oil and gas spill. It's, the, the stakes are really high. Okay, no problem. Head back a little bit until you're uh, back where that sling was on that pipe. We'll find that anode. We'll put that anode down. According to the beacons, we're looking pretty good there. And we'll check it afterwards then. You'll have something to aim off. Roger, I've got a picture of it. Right, ready to come down? Come down. Coming down. Just make sure it doesn't land on that part, eh? Watch out. You umbilical clear? Watch out. Beautiful. Oh, stop there. So eventually the fish have cleared just for a few seconds and I've just got a glimpse of where the where the low's sitting 
next to the pipeline. All stop. You are Johnny? Yeah, all good. Okay, mate. Oh, I'm not hot. Bloody shit. I tell you what, if you think you're in the vicinity, we need to just put this down and disconnect it, eh? And I've confirmed it's okay for it to go down, and he's also had a beacon on the on the load as well, so we can see where it is on the surface. And we, we've come down and we've landed it. I think you're good, mate. Coming down. Okay, coming down. You, you just don't have the time to uh, fine tune it, mate. Yeah, right, John. Just disconnect. We've got three minutes and then uh, I don't want to leave the crane attached between dives. Roger. So good enough landing, Johnny. Awesome. So I'm stoked when I've landed it. Like I feel a huge sigh of relief. And my supervisors asked me to orientate whereabouts the load sitting next to the pipeline. And I'm, I'm engulfed in fish again at this stage. I'm blind and this is when it happens. So I've looked down and as soon as the, f the fish have cleared for just a few seconds, I've looked down and there's a, a huge smooth stingray with this barb pointed straight at my balls. And <laughs> it can't be far off because I think it's on the end of that rope, hey? It's something that I'll never forget. Um, my heart skipped a beat, to be honest with you. Um, I, didn't, I didn't say, I think I sort of made a bit of a funny little noise. My supervisor didn't even acknowledge it because I think he knew what sort of situation I was in. He was trying to keep everything cool and um, directed. Yeah, Roger. Okay, that's looking good, eh? Yeah. Right, we're gonna start getting you back, mate. Roger. Coming up in your umbilical. Roger. But um, yeah, I was lucky and I've actually been really lucky over the years with these stingrays. I've had a lot of amazing encounters with these, these huge rays. They sort of seem to have got a bit of a taste for me. But yeah, it's something I'll, I won't forget.